everybody how are you Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to be eliminating the second Knight's Cavalry located in the Weaving Peninsula outside this large hole in the wall at night. This one seems to have less moves than the previous Knight's Cavalry so there won't be too many replays for the moves here. But for starters one of the moves that he will commonly throw um, when you're standing on his right side which again I'm going to recommend to do for this fight is this one-armed uh, flail swing that he does on his left side. This is a move that you can punish pretty pretty easily with a jump attack or even an unsheath. So here's his slow flailing attack where he swings twice and then he kind of like winds up one more big time and then like jumps and swings at the same time. That one you can't really punish that much unless you're standing on his other side, but you can punish it. And as you can see, he has yet to throw that annoying horse ramming attack because I'm not standing on the side that has his flail. Similar to like the first Knight's Cavalry fight, it's like if you stand on his on his bad side, then he can't throw that attack. He still only has a limited move set. And of course, when you knock him off his horse, take full advantage, land on sheaths, jump attacks, and something that you don't see me do here, but something that you'll see me do when I hit my strength build, is you can actually just pretty easily circle him and land a backstab attack off him. So be sure, definitely be sure to do that to get the most amount of damage. So here we go, I roll to his bad side, he can't do much about it. I just missed with the unsheath. Here he comes with the lucky hit. But yeah, obviously, it goes without saying that when he's weak, don't throw caution completely to the wind. Make sure you got enough enough health to sustain one of his attacks if you're going to finish him off like I did. Like I did here, just kind of chase him down when he's weak. But yeah, there's really not like a lot to his fight. Um, I found that he was kind of like more annoying than the other Knight's Cavalry just because this one I feel like runs away more and the other one was more willing to engage because of like what I feel is a bigger move set um but yeah let's move on to strength so with strength builds I feel like I kind of feel like they had an easier time with this boss because jump attacks do a lot more damage and there are a lot of windows for jump attacks for this boss you know you can kind of do a lot of damage with deadly in and out attacks. So he's coming in for his jump attack. I hit him with my own jump attack as a punish. And that's what this fight is. You're just punishing every single one of his moves um, with a jump attack, essentially. You can do heavy swings as well um, and, and might even you know hit him more, but, but just try and make sure that you're on his bad side, like shown in the replay, like I'm getting on the side that doesn't have the flail. And that allows the window to land uh, a heavy or a charged heavy or a special attack to be to be bigger so when the horse is about to do a slam attack if you know that you're in the clear definitely take advantage and punish with a jump attack as well because um, it's it's not that bad of a move to dodge and it, it's not like he's gonna snap 90 90 degrees and get you so but yeah you could just see a lot of this fight is him just kind of running away from my jump attacks and trying to just come in and land an attack or two on me and he just keeps getting punished with with jump attacks but yeah i mean as you can see there really there really isn't a lot to this boss fight i mean a lot of it is jump attacks you know you can use a better ash of war than stamp but but yeah i mean i mean there just really isn't a lot a lot to this boss fight just keep working at him keep cutting away at his horse and and then become aggressive when when the horse becomes weak so that we can capitalize on him the most when he's knocked on his ass. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier. He's pretty easy to, to circle around and and when he's knocked on his ass off of his horse, definitely circle around him and try to get that stab attack off. Maybe even two if you know if you're if you're fast enough. But definitely take full advantage. And at this state of the fight it's it's basically over. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Try to stay off that side um, to avoid his his annoying horse ram attack, and and that's really it. That's really it, guys. I mean, it it really really isn't that bad. He's he's just kind of annoying with with keeping his range, but but as long as you're able to counter him appropriately with with some of the tips that I've shown in this video, you too will not struggle against him and make him look like a little bitch.
send him packing. Now, normally I would also show off me clapping his cheeks as a mage. However, of course, I was not able to clip that happening. So, I'm just going to describe instead what to do. So, first of all, because of all his movement, he's a pain in the ass to hit by normal spells. So, to capture the greatest radius, you probably are going to want to use the Glintstone Arc. Now, because of the possibility of missing and for other spells that, that I could not be including, I'm going to recommend to allocate at least three of the blue flasks because I found that I found that the big challenge of this fight as a mage was not being able to hit him with my magic. And I was, even when I was knocking him off of his horse, I was running out of magic and not being able to do a lot of damage because the only thing I had left was a short sword. So if you allocate at least three of those flasks, it'll be, it'll be an easy, easy fight. And the side of grace is so close to where he spawns that it's really not that big of a deal to allocate those flasks, go beat him with glintstone arc, and then come back, you know, switch your magic, and allocate your flask back accordingly to how you like it. My last piece of advice to beating him on mage is to, again, just stay on his, on his bad side, on his left side, the side that he is not holding the flail on, and, and he's going to be limited to throwing, to throwing only one or two moves before, before having to run away again, um, which is good for having to you know, either heal or, or regain more FP with the blue flask. So, so yeah, that's that's really it, guys. I mean, there's there's really no uh, no more advice I can give on on beating him. So, uh, good luck to y'all. Thanks for watching, everybody. And for more boss filling content, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that you too can defeat the mighty forces of darkness. Goodbye.